Why is it that some cable stacks that you lift feel super light, they feel super good on your joints, and you have no problems with them, but others, they just feel clunky. They feel heavy uh, for whatever reason. You know, you used 100 pounds over on this cable column, but then you used 100 over there and they felt way different. I'm gonna explain exactly why that's happening to you, why you're experiencing that, and how you can actually uh, use this information concretely in your training to make better training decisions for both yourself and also any clients that you have. So just very simply, and I'm gonna kind of oversimplify things a little bit here just for the sake of uh, explanation and understanding. Imagine you have three weight stacks and you have actually 100 pounds on either one of them, right? Forget about the labels. Different companies choose to handle this whole conversation differently, so labels can be confusing. Let's just assume you have 100 pounds on either one of them. Some weight stacks, they'll have a single little pricky thing here and the cable will just be directly attached, right? And it'll pull upward like this. And at the other end of this equation, right, you have a handle and you're pulling on the handle. And two things are really important to this conversation. One is what these different scenarios do to the actual weight in the handle. And then two is what these scenarios do to how far that handle moves compared to the weight stack. Okay, so for each, we're gonna go over what both of those things are in every circumstance. So when you lift 100 pounds and there's a single cable, in your hand, you will actually be having 100 pounds applied to your, uh, through the handle. And, but at the same time, when you move this a foot, you'll be, and let's just assume we're moving all of these a foot, okay, just to standardize, as in the same way I standardize the weight. If you move this a foot, in other words, if you move the handle a foot, this thing will move the exact same distance, right? It makes sense. Just imagine there's a cable and it's going around just a single pulley for the sake of this and you're pulling it, like kind of like it was just slumped over, you know, a metal bar, right? And you were using a single pulley. So you have 100 pounds in the handle and you move this a foot, it moves one foot on the handle. If we go over to this kind of weight stack, and many of you have probably seen this at your gym, there's a single pulley and the single pulley kind of loops around it like this. Just think about this logically. Like if you have a thing here and you know two cables are coming down, what is gonna ultimately happen is there's gonna be basically 50 pounds on either side of this, right? Because this is 100, it gets divided by two. And so again, if you actually had 100 pounds on here, eventually you get to the handle and you ask yourself how much force is imposed on my hand grabbing this handle, it would actually be half of the weight as compared to this scenario. Why? Because it's divided by two. And not only that, when this thing, when this stack moved a foot, when we move the handle a foot, if I move the handle in this situation a foot, this will actually move half of a foot, so 0.5 feet. And just put simply, the reason that happens is because the cable length, in essence, just gets recycled as this thing moves upward. Okay, so you're starting to see a pattern here. Now what happens if we double the pulleys, right? We have twice the amount of cables going upward here. And so in each of these, we have 25, 25, 25, 25, and eventually we poop out to the handle 25 pounds. And as you might have already predicted, what happens if we have one pulley, it moves half the distance. Well, if we pull this handle a foot, it will actually move 0.25 feet, okay? So in this direction, what is happening is we are experiencing greater feelings of smoothness, right, in the cable and greater feelings of lightness. And the reason that's happening is because the cable stack is just moving less. If any of you have heard of this concept of inertia, inertia just means resistance to change. And so this one over here, because it's moving a much greater distance, has a much greater resistance to change and it's therefore more difficult to control than things on this side of the spectrum. And this is true even if we equated exactly the weight in every scenario. So imagine now that the labels were taken care of and you were actually lifting 100 in the handle, 100 in the handle, 100 in the handle, just equate for the force to the handle. The distance component of these is really the big piece. And if you're confused about what's happening with the pulleys, because certain machines, they have extra pulleys, they have levers that are pivoting around, it can get very confusing. Just simplify it in your head. Walk up to the cable stack and just pull it uh, a standardized distance. Just pull it from your chest to maybe your waist and be like, okay, how much did the weight stack move? If it seems to move just as much as you move the handle, you're dealing with this. If it moves half as much, you're dealing with this. If it moves a quarter as much, you're dealing with this. And so what is actually valuable to understand about this is that in either one of these scenarios, neither one of these scenarios necessarily is better or worse. It just depends on who you are and what you're trying to do.
Okay, so let's give some examples at the extremes. Imagine that you're an IFBB Pro bodybuilder, you're maxing out every cable stack, you're like, why do I need so much you know, weight on this thing over here versus this thing over here? It's sensible in a lot of scenarios, especially if you're an advanced skilled lifter, you have a good sense of control where your body is, where the handle is moving in space, and how fast or slow it's moving. You can handle this situation here, uh, and you might actually need this situation here because this will feel in your hands and through the actual changes in force, this will end up actually being heavier, right, on average. Uh, again, we might actually be able to equate for the weight that's technically in the handle, but once motion is introduced and this whole distance thing comes into play, now all of a sudden we've got a different situation. So if you're someone that's kind of like in the middle ground, like maybe you're a more advanced uh, uh, trainee, but maybe you're still natural, maybe you're not a 300 pound bodybuilder, um, but you like to, uh, this, this sort of feeling of greater smoothness of this one pulley on top. And to be honest, this is kind of my preference. I think it's a good middle ground for a lot of exercises and I'm not strong enough to you know, max every cable stack that I use out. These ones tend to be a little bit light and these ones tend to be a little bit clunky for me. Uh, but if you're on this end of the spectrum, you know, this is a great option in my estimation a lot of times for training you know, smaller muscles like the deltoids, uh, the middle deltoids specifically. I mean, the deltoids as a whole are technically big, but when you take individual parts of the deltoid and split it up, you don't need very much weight for something like a lateral raise or something like a biceps curl or triceps extension necessarily, especially if they're done single arm. And these kinds of pulleys are also very good for uh, rehabbing populations or po just populations of people that have less overall experience or are injured. So if you're a gym owner, if you're a physical therapist who is making different considerations, maybe just think about like your client population. Do I have people on average who are more advanced and who can, you know, are going to need more weight? Are you at a bodybuilding gym? Well, maybe lean toward buying these two types of things. If not, you know, buying these two types of things instead, I think makes a little bit more sense. And you as a trainee, once you start to identify which thing is which, again, you don't even have to know anything about the pulleys and the pulling mechanics and, you know, how the cables are redirecting and how many pulleys there are, you can simply just again move the handle, see how much the weight stack moves, and then you can be like, okay, this one over here might feel better for my client, or maybe it'll just feel better for me, right? And so instead of just not being able to actually understand strategically why certain things are happening, maybe you know you have to use this cable station on day one, but then on day four, when you go back to use that cable station, someone else is taking it or is using it, um, you want to be able to actually understand like what things are actually substituting in a one-to-one -one sense versus what exercises are you just doing completely different variations of week to week. And you know, oftentimes what happens, and the most common thing that comes up is people have trouble tracking their actual loads across exercises because this changes the load drastically. So overall, this one moves the greatest distance, this one moves the least distance, this one is somewhere in between. Overall, I would recommend if you're stronger, more advanced, better control, generally speaking, these two I think are where I'd lean just by you know the necessity of how strong you are and then these two are where i'd lean if you're more on the sort of uh, general population side of the spectrum or maybe you're just a less advanced lifter you're honing in the skills or you're coaching others to hone in their skills so i hope this video was helpful please drop any questions in the comments section below